Netflix is confident that a multifaceted investigation of Dahmer, as it did with Bundy, will help viewers comprehend his psychology and motivations, teach them how to spot warning signals, and increase our capacity for empathy. Or perhaps they understand that people are addicted to terrible catastrophes and will do whatever it takes to satisfy viewers' true crime addiction. Welcome back, everyone! In today's video, we will be talking all about conversations with a killer, the Jeffrey Dahmer tapes. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Let's begin. This month is Halloween, which means content producers all around America are actively plundering the tragedy mine. The three-part documentary series, Conversations with a Killer, the Jeffrey Dahmer tapes, released by Netflix in a few weeks, is the second to focus on the notorious cannibal and necrophile serial killer. It is directed by renowned documentarian Joe Berlinger. Dahmer Monster, The Jeffrey Dahmer Story, a 10-hour drama miniseries directed by Ryan Murphy, comes after. This double dosage of Dahmer video is comparable to the torrent of Ted Bundy programming that Netflix released in the early months of 2019. After the Zac Efron-led film Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile, the Dahmer tapes struggles to meet on all counts, as it veers awkwardly between character study, social commentary, and pure shock value, ultimately settling somewhere in the middle of all three. The audio of Dahmer's interviews with his lawyer, which give the audience never-before-heard first-person stories of Dahmer's crimes in his own words, is what draws people in similar to how the Bundy recordings did. Wendy Patrickus, Dahmer's inexperienced defense attorney, serves as our surrogate in this story. At one point, she likens her predicament to that of Clarice Starling in The Silence of the Lambs. But Dahmer is a very different character from Hannibal Lecter. Lecter is intelligent and cunning, whereas Dahmer is unflinchingly honest and speaks in a monotone about his actions. Berlinger follows all of the appropriate steps, including a brief investigation into Dahmer's background, his lonely social life, and anything else that might have influenced him to take this homicidal course. However, outside of typical familial dysfunction, nobody, not even Dahmer himself, can explain his behavior. He ponders why he is the way that he is, and why he doesn't experience emotions similar to others. However, he cannot solve the mystery, and neither can we, Patricus, because Dahmer possesses these bizarre compulsions while we do not. Even though hearing Dahmer's voice is fascinating, it is not always enlightening. Even the doctors who attempt to provide insight find themselves repeatedly repeating themselves throughout the three-hour documentary, due to the monotonous repetition of his murders and wants. For the entirety of the series, no one can tell us much more than that Dahmer lacks empathy and is a profoundly reclusive loner who requires total sexual control. The documentary does an excellent job of focusing on the accounts of Dahmer's victims and his killings' broader social and cultural background. His 17 victims were mostly young gay men of color who were active in Milwaukee's nightlife. Michael Ross, an older gay black man who knew some of Dahmer's victims, offers cultural context and a crucial emotional focus on how Dahmer terrorized the neighborhood. During a devastating tale, Vernell Bass, Dahmer's neighbor, describes how Dahmer won his trust and his feelings of betrayal when he learned who he was. One of the victims' buddies, Jeff Connor, who was the last person to see him alive besides Dahmer, sobs as he recalls leaving his friend with Dahmer in the middle of the night. These interviews are what gives the narrative its heart and soul. Hearing about how Dahmer was able to use his white, Midwestern normalness to dodge any suspicion, as well as how the police decided to disregard the numerous missing person cases involving young gay minorities, causes reflection and a genuine investment into what this tragedy might teach us. What about Dahmer, though? Did he have a plan behind his craziness? And if so, what was it? The documentary doesn't delve far enough to yield essential revelations. Following a particularly moving victim narrative, Berlinger quickly transports us back to Dahmer's early years, where his schoolmate Eric Tyson explains his young classmate's obsession with skulls and dead animals. 
In his own words, Dahmer supports this information by describing how he loves to dissect them and look inside them. Almost as casually as another man may casually mention how he likes to break open a cold drink and watch the Knicks after work. Patricus then tells us about one of his most heinous crimes, toying with his victims' as corpses after he had killed and dismembered them. It makes sense that Berlinger withholds Dahmer's version of this incident, which is mainly responsible for Dahmer's indelible mark on American popular culture. The ordinary listener who wants their total dosage of salacious detail from the series may feel a little cheated without the juicy, gruesome confessionals of Dahmer revealing his cannibalism or his necrophilia, though, as the attraction to persuade people to watch was having this sort of bombshell on record. Without that level of unlimited access, Dahmer tapes or no Dahmer tapes, we are limited to the same armchair psychological interpretations that cannot provide us with the understanding we may need. Before finally retelling Dahmer's murder by another prisoner, the final episode spends significant time debating Dahmer's claim of insanity. Patricus, his close confidant and lawyer, thought he required substantial psychological assistance that he couldn't acquire while there. Hearing that same pleading, a mournful voice narrates endlessly gloomy tales that had made her feel sympathy for him. Although it is challenging to envision Dahmer ending up anywhere other than in prison, it is difficult to disagree that Dahmer was, on some level, psychotic. Despite Berlinger's greatest efforts, getting people to care about what happened to Dahmer is difficult. Dahmer acknowledged that his disease was terminal and that he had no idea how to recover. He also admits that he probably deserved to die. The only regret he felt was not feeling any guilt. Despite numerous attempts to learn more about the man, the murders and consequences ended up more fascinating than the man himself. Even if we'd all like to ignore it, his crimes were fascinating, which draws viewers to a series of this kind. I hope that the world would forget about Dahmer, that he would be placed in the ash bin of history, says E. Michael McCann, the former district attorney for Milwaukee, resignedly toward the end of the series. However, Netflix and our darkest impulses could never permit such a thing, even if there might be nothing left to say about the man. That's all for this video. What are your views about it? Do let us know in the comment section below. We'll be back real soon with another informative video just for you. Until next time.